calling to order the Committee on Agriculture. Um, today's hearing is um, being convened on Wednesday, March 23rd, 9 a.m. via video conference in conference room 323. My name is Amy, 325, sorry. Um, my name is Amy Prusa. I'm serving as the vice chair. To my right is Chair Hashem. To my left is Representative Mariyoshi. And then we also have Representative Martin in the room. Other members will be joining online. Um, we're going to begin with uh, SB 3197, which establishes a farmer apprentice mentoring program. The first testifier that we're going to hear from in person is um, Director Shimabukuro Geyser from the Department of Agriculture. Aloha and good morning, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Phyllis Shimabukuro Geyser, Chairperson, Hawaii Department of Agriculture. Uh, the department stands on its written testimony. We appreciate the intent of the measure. Uh, we offer comments and um, we just want to um, highlight in our testimony that we believe that um, it's not only uh, upon the department to uh, work on this measure, but um, it's a, a, a collaborative effort. And we identified uh, organizations in the agricultural sector that um, we need to collaborate with. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? The next testifier we have is um, Trevor Arbarzua from the Chamber of Commerce on Zoom. Yes, thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Trevor Abrazo with the Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. We stand on our written testimony in support of this measure, and we support all work-based learning programs and getting students out and learning trades. Um, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next person testifying is Hunter Hevelin from the Hawaii Farmers Union United in support and in person. Uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Hunter Hevelin on behalf of the Hawaii Farmers Union United. This is uh, uh, yet another version of a bill that we've been pushing for for many years to expand farmer apprentice mentorship opportunities for young producers across the state. And I believe this will essentially function as a direct subsidy to support farmers and expand agricultural labor opportunities going forward. So happy to answer any questions and seeking your support in this measure. Thank you. Thank you. Next to, session, next to testify, we have Brian Miyamoto from the Hawaii Farm Bureau in support. Good morning, Vice Chair Peruso, Chair Hashem, and members of the committee. Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. We'll stand on a written testimony in support. Okay, so the, those are the only testifiers we have um, on Zoom or in person. Um, we have an additional, uh, I would say about 25 folks submitting testimony in support um, and one additional uh, testimony with comments. Are there any questions from the committee? Is there anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Seeing none, are there any questions from the committee members? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna move on to the next measure, which is SB 2218 SD1 relating to the Food Hub pilot program. On this measure, we're gonna hear first from Director, Phil Director Shimabukuro Geyser from the Department of Agriculture with comments. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, Aloha Chair and members of the committee. Uh, we stand on our written testimony. We support the intent and um, like the measure before, uh, the department comments that it's going to uh, take additional uh, staffing uh, to do um, the work that is uh, uh, requested of us in this measure. Thank you. Thank you. Next person to testify will be Dana Shapiro from the Hawaii Ulu Producers Co-op um, in support. Aloha Kako. My name is Donna Shapiro and I'm providing testimony in support of this bill on behalf of the Hawaii Ulu Cooperative. Funds requested under this bill would create a food hub pilot program to support organizations such as ours that provide critical connectivity services between small farms and markets. COVID-19 exposed the fragility of our food system 
and structures for collective action that empower small farms to contribute to the supply chain are vital to strengthening our food security, resilience, and economic prosperity. Food hubs are the primary instrument enabling this form of collective action in Hawaii today, and SB 2218 is the primary piece of legislation needed to support and strengthen them. Additionally, this bill would provide gap improvement funds to complete expansion of the state-owned Honolo Marshalling Yard facility, one of only 10 food hub facilities in the state owned by the Department of Agriculture and leased to farmer organizations. The Honalo facility has been managed by the co-op since 2017. And over the past four and a half years, we have utilized it to aggregate, process, store, and distribute nearly 1 million pounds of local staple crops from over 100 farmers located on three islands, Hawaii, Maui, and Oahu. We focus on culturally significant and locally adapted staples, primarily ulu and kalo. Proposed upgrades will increase the capacity of this facility by a factor of 10, from about 250,000 pounds to 2 million pounds per year, adding tens of millions of dollars each year to state GDP and increasing our self-sufficiency in the most critical food group, staples, which also happens to be the food group in which Hawaii is the least self-sufficient. In conclusion, we urge you to support SB 2218. It fulfills multiple state goals, including farm to school meals. Prior to COVID-19, the co-op was the primary vendor for the Department of Education for staples, local staples, supplying all 256 public schools statewide. Proposed improvements will increase the organization's capacity to supply schools and other state institutions with nutritious, local, and culturally appropriate staple foods. Mahalo for your time and consideration. Thank you so much. Um, next, we're gonna hear from Micah Monacata from the Ulupono Initiative in support. Aloha, Vice Chair Peruso, Chair Hashem, members of the committee. Micah Munikata on behalf of the Ulupono Initiative. We'll stand on our testimony in support of this measure. Again, um, like the previous speaker just mentioned, just, just a very important bill to support small farmers and also to support um, the aggregation and, and efforts of the food hub over in on Hawaii Island at the Honala Marshalling Yard. Um, really appreciate all the work that they do. And it's really, really important work to really help the state move forward on its food production and food security goals. Thank you very much, Vice Chair. Thank you so much. The next person we'll hear from is Lauren Zerbel, Hawaii Food Industry Association. Not on. The next uh, person to testify will be Hunter Hevelin from Hawaii Farmers Union United in support. Uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Hunter Hevelin on behalf of Hawaii Farmers Union United. Uh, we are in strong support for this bill. Uh, I think in particular, the pandemic has highlighted the critical importance of food hubs as an organizing and aggregating entity that has helped sustain both producers and communities uh, across the state over these trying years. So we hope to see state support uh, come in and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, we have Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau, in person. Thank you, Vice Chair, Chair, members of the committee, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. You have a written testimony in support. Um, I, I think we've, we've talked about it many times of the importance of the food hubs. Uh, as your previous speaker said, especially during the pandemic, Hawaii Farm Bureau participated in over 30 large food distributions and uh, food hubs uh, were entities that we would utilize because they had the skill, because they were supporting the small farmers and aggregating the necessary items that a lot of these food distributions and community feeding programs wanted. Um, I believe we're still working with the Ulupua. They, they play a, a critical role in food security. Um, we purchased quite a bit from them along with other organizations during the pandemic. And again, as an aggregator, they were able to supply um, the amounts that we were needing. Uh, to support the food banks and the different food, uh, feeding uh, programs out there. So uh, we're very supportive of food hubs and we like this bill because it adds additional funding for the Ulu Co-op. So we do ask for your support. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you so much. Next we have um, Phil Acosta from Aloha Harvest in support. Not on. We have on this measure, um, about 62 in support and, and two with comments in total. 
Um, is there anyone else who wishes to testify on this measure? Seeing none, are there any questions from members of the committee? Rep. Martin. Thank you. Um, I have a question for the Department of Agriculture. Um, thank you. So I'm very supportive of this bill. I noticed, you know, there's no numbers yep. in it at this time. Um, in the like, what has there been discussion about what the appropriate size of a grant might be and how many different food hubs might be served? No, we have not received any um information from the requesters of um, what they believe uh, is needed. Um, but just based on the language of the measure, uh, we know that our existing staff cannot do a five-year pilot without additional staff support. Um, so that's why in our uh, written testimony, we stated that we identify partners in the agricultural sector that we'll have to work with and collaborate with. but. As um, we are staff now, uh, we don't have the capacity to do a five-year pilot. That's our analysis so far. Thank you. Any other questions? I'd like to follow up with Mr. Hevelin on this question. If you can address that question about um, the um, preferred desire, I mean, the preferred um, extent of the grant. The preferred extent? Yeah. Uh, well. Fortunately, there is a, an organized group, the Food Hub Hui, that's been meeting for a number of years or coordinating uh, across hubs, across the counties, across the islands. And they've done internal analyses, trying to better understand their infrastructure needs and prioritizing some of their fundable next steps. And so we view this really as a sort of a, a subsidy program, a grant award program that I, I hope wouldn't take a, a whole lot of additional staff time from the group the department, though I would certainly defer to them on what's required. Um, in terms of act, like actual numbers of you know what's desired, we can certainly get and share that with you all. I don't have it immediately on hand, but um, the hope is that this would be a funding mechanism for the state to increase its investment in agriculture and agricultural processing, agricultural aggregation across the, the islands. Um, and in doing so, really help support small and family farm operations uh, who've composed the, the largest uh, quotient of farmers across the state, but yep. I think historically have been recipients of state subsidies in a far smaller quotient than they are actually representative okay. um, across our farms. Thank you. And if you can share that information with us, and we'll share it with the members. Sure. Seeing no additional questions, we're going to move on to the next measure. Um, SB 2056, um, SD 1, relating to soil classifications. Um, first to testify, we'd like to call up Chair Philip Shima Pro Geyser from the Department of Ag in support. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair. Uh, the department stands on its written testimony. We support the measure and we uh, defer to uh, Office of Planning. Thank you. Thank you. Next to testify, um, we'll hear from Mary Alice Evans from the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Good morning, Vice Chair and members. Um, the Office of Planning strongly supports uh, SB 2056. Uh, we believe that a review of the soils rating system is timely and would help uh, the state and counties preserve the best agricultural lands in the state. We would, if the legislature um, uh, passes this measure, we look forward to working with the Department of Agriculture, the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, the Land Use Commission, and the USDA. Thank you, and I'm available for questions. Mahalo. Next, we're going to hear from Nicholas Comerford from University of Hawaii in support. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair and Committee members. Nick Comerford, uh, the Dean of the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, strong supporter of this bill. And um, we stand on our testimony and are available for questions if needed. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau, in support. Thank you, Vice Chair, Chair, members of the committee. The Hawaii Farm Bureau will stand on its written testimony in support. Thank you. 
And finally, on this measure, we have Hunter Hevelin, uh, Hawaii Farmers Union United in support. Well, uh, Chair and members, uh, I, I'd like to maybe clarify some of our written testimony. So our specific request is to add in language relating to an assess this study, particularly focusing on multifunctional agricultural land use regulations. As written, the last 50 years of Land Study Bureau classifications have solely been focused on productive output, which is a measure of how much you know, the, the caloric potential of, of a parcel of land. And we've seen the, the detrimental effects of solely focusing on what can be extracted from land um, as our, you know, reefs across Molokai, I think would be a good example, uh, demonstrate. So our, our request is that we ensure that this study particularly and explicitly looks at multifunctional analyses that consider ecosystem services that can come from good agricultural land management that are extend beyond just productive capacity, but also consider hydrological function, the utility as fire breaks, community view planes, and et cetera. And there is a robust uh, literature as well as practice being adopted in many other states that are trying to have a more nuanced look into how we evaluate and how we consider agricultural land classifications. And we believe this to be a critical mechanism by which we can then evaluate how other forms of state subsidy, for example, leasing, could be weighed not just against what we might extract from that land, but how that operation could serve our community and our ecosystems in multiple ways. Thank and you. happy to answer any questions and thank you for your time. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, we have one additional, we have actually um, a couple of people submitting, a few people submitting um, testimony in support. Uh, and one um, submission in opposition. Um, is there any other, are there any other members of the community who would like to testify on this measure? Seeing none, members, are there any questions? Seeing none, we're going to move on to the next measure, SB 2907, SD1, um, relating to invasive species. Um, the first person to testify on this measure, uh, Director Phyllis Shima Geyser, Department of Ag, with comments. Mahalo, Vice Chair. Uh, the department stands on this written testimony. We support the intent. <clears throat> and we'd like to comment in our written testimony that uh, the department has requested um, in fiscal year 2023 funding for invasive species, such as CLR control in the executive supplemental budget. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Chair Case, Department of Land and Natural Resources with comments. Aloha Chair Hashem, Vice Chair Peruso, and members of the committee. I'm Chelsea Arnott on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources and the planner with the Hawaii Invasive Species Council that's administered by the department. Uh, the department stands on its written testimony providing comments. Uh, the department understands that coffee leaf rust is a major pest of Hawaii and there's a need for a coordinated effort and resources to manage its spreads. The Hawaii Invasive Species Council, however, has not yet adopted any administrative rules. Um, so there is no list of invasive species classified by the council to which coffee leaf rust could be added. Our staff at HISC is prioritizing the development of these rules, but the authorities given to HISC through Hawaii Revised Statute Chapter 194 are complex and they involve all the departments of our council. Um, and I'm available for comments or any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Nicholas Comerford, University of Hawaii with comments. Well, good morning again, Chair, Vice Chair and Committee members, Nick Comerford, Dean of CTAR. Uh, we also support the intent of this and look forward to appropriate funding to uh, address the problem. Uh, we're available for questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, we have Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau in support. Thank you, Vice Chair. The Hawaii Farm Bureau will stand on its written testimony in support. Thank you. Next, you have Rebecca. Oh, sorry. Um, Chris Manfredi from the Hawaii Coffee Association in support. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Chris Manfredi testifying in support for the Hawaii Coffee Association. Uh, we'll stand in our written testimony and we are available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. That's our final testifier on this measure. Is there anyone else wishing to testify? 
Seeing none, members, are there any questions with respect to this measure? Seeing none, we're gonna move on to SB 2996, SD1, uh, relating to ants. First person to testify will be Director or Chair Case from Department of Land and Natural Resources in support. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Chelsea Arnott again on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources and the department stands on its written testimony in support. Mahalo. Next we have Christy Martin, UH PCSU Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species in support. Aloha Vice Chair Peruso, members of the committee, Chair Hashem. Thank you so much for the opportunity to testify. Christy Martin with Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species. We're in strong support of this measure. Uh, the Hawaii Ant Lab was created because there wasn't um, specialized capacity within state agencies. Funding would help them continue to meet uh, the needs of the state for controlling and developing new control methods for fire ants as well as other tramp ant species. Mahalo. Thank you. Next, we have Tim Lyons, Hawaii Pest Control in support, Pest Control Association in support. Tim. Not on, sorry. Um, next, we have Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau in support. Getting a good workout there. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Chair, Chair, members of the committee. The Hawaii Farm Bureau will stand on its written testimony in support. Thank you. Thank you so much. On this measure, we have um, about 20 pieces of testimony all in support. Uh, it, are there any other members of the community who wish to testify on this measure? Seeing none, community members or committee members, are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, we're going to move on to SB 2621 SD1 relating to. Um, bovine tuberculosis control operations on Molokai. Uh, first person to testify will be Chair Shimabuko Geyser from the Department of Ag in support. Hello, Vice Chair. Uh, we will stand on our written testimony supporting the measure. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau in support. Thank you, Vice Chair. The Hawaii Farm Bureau will stand on its written testimony in support. Thank you so much. Is there anyone with Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Seeing none, committee members, are there any questions? Seeing none. Moving on to SB 3251 HD1, relating to hunting guides. <clears throat> First person to testify will be Afshin Siddiqui, Department of Land and Natural Resources, in support. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Um, I'm Afshin Siddiqui with the Department of Land and Natural Resources, and we stand on our testimony in support with comments. Thank you. Next person to testify will be Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau, in support. Thank you, Vice Chair, Chair, members of the committee. The Hawaii Farm Bureau will stand on its written testimony in support. Thank you so much. Is there one, anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Seeing none, committee members, are there any questions? Uh, for DLNR. So I, I had the same reaction um, upon reading this bill and reading your testimony that trespassing is already illegal and we already have uh, statutes on the books to deal with this. Can you think of any reason why we might need this separate? I mean, would it, would it help enforcement in any way? Do, do people have certain uh, implied access rights or, or license, implied licenses that we need to worry about for hunting? And, and that's why we're doing this bill or, or do you absolutely just not need this at all? I, um, thank you for the question. I think um, it is already in statute that you need permission from a landowner to for a hunting guide to go on the land to do hunting. Um, it probably would make it a little bit more easy to enforce. We as a department have not received any complaints um, in the past about this issue. Um, so we support it, but but we, you know, and we think it can help with enforcement. So there's there's nothing, there's no kind of implied anything that allows access 
for Honduras is, is what I'm hearing. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, seeing then we're gonna move on to uh, HCR 77, HR 70, um, requesting the Office of the Auditor to conduct a performance audit of the 10 agricultural parks operated by the Agricultural Resource Management Division of the Department of Agriculture. First to testify, um, we will hear from Brian Cow, Department of Agriculture, Ag Resource Management Division um, with comments. Oh, excuse me, Vice Chair, uh, I'll be uh, presenting the testimony and Brian Cow is, um, is uh, not, I don't know if he's available today to answer questions, but we also have Deputy. Thank you, Morris Atta. Yeah, so the department offers its strong concern that this measure is premature and we, therefore we respectfully oppose the resolution. We're available to um, answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next person to testify, we have Bosco Pet Petrasevic uh, in support. Good morning, Chair and Vice Chair. I have to be, uh, first of all, thank you for letting me testify and I'm strongly in support of this measure. I'm an attorney for Simeon and Kathy Rojas and they are the people that Department of Agriculture claims that they support, but I'm gonna put it bluntly to you. That's the only way I know how to say it. They've been the victim of fraud, corruption, negligence, and complete dereliction of duty by the HTO and its official. I mean, you know, I hear all these theories about how we're supposed to reach sustainability goals, how we're supposed to farm, but in practice, what's going on out in the Kukuku Agricultural Parks, there is not much farming going on. What is going on is corruption, fraud. The main lessees are not doing any farming. And then they're engaging in illegal subleases where they're taking advantage of poor farmers like my client who are induced by an example, HDO official Roy Hasegawa and another employee of HDO over there, Thomas Narva is a security guard. They're induced by them to enter to these legal subleases, build up the land, create a farming operation only later on to be extorted and then kicked out. In my client's example, Roy Hasegawa, he took their application, never submitted it, lied to them for five years about their sublease not being approved, then let them invest over $200,000 to build up an aquaponics operation, and then he conspired with the lessee over the Thomas Narvez that he knows that he's not doing any farming. And, I, and there was a civil bid article, anybody who goes out to that land for one hour will show immediately to tell you there is not much farming ongoing on there. They know this, they're refusing to do anything about it. And then when my clients were being illegally evicted, when Thomas Norway should have illegally evict them, Roy Hasegawa and HDO officials knew about this illegal eviction, said nothing, did nothing, stepped in nothing, and they're still doing nothing. Right now, they're still victims of fraud on that land. They're in illegal limbo. They invested the entire life savings. I had a couple of late night conversations with Simeon. He's a war veteran. He's calling me and he's telling me he's gonna kill himself because he's a victim of fraud and no one wants to do anything about it. We have invited HDOA many times, come out on the land, look at it for yourself. And, and the reason you know, they're opposing the audit is because they don't wanna look under the sand. The audit is absolutely necessary because I promise you that audit is gonna cover, no one's doing much of farming. There's nothing going on. They're not doing their jobs. And the only thing they're doing, they're scamming unsuspecting farmers. Okay. And Roy Hastigawa, so, the HD official, is one of the main, main culprits of that. Thank you very much for your testimony. Members, you've received late testimony from um, two community members. Uh, the first is Catherine Aquino Rojas. Would you like to come forward and testify? Thank you Thank for you. hearing my sorry. Hello, I'm Catherine Aquino Rojas, and I'm coming forward to ask for an investigation of, because of unlawful practices on state ag land. I believe that this is a case of human trafficking of a veteran 
my husband who was coerced into a situation by negligence referral. Simeon was referred to Thomas Narvarez, a leasee on lot number 10 by Kahuku Ag Park manager, Roy Hasigawa. Thomas, whom was awarded this land, is an unqualified farmer. He locked my husband into a situation of extortion, misleading him to invest and farm on a portion of his low cost ag lease land. Thomas charged my husband an inflated price with others I witnessed doing business on lot number 10. Hasegawa approved the sublease agreement as he assisted my husband with the sublease, but failed to notify the agriculture board for final approval. I feel this is fraud and mis misinterpretation. I, and I say extortion because Thomas took it upon himself along with his contractor friend to illegally build the aquaponics system without Simeon's approval. This is fraud and blackmail. Thomas stole our material when my husband was away for a month. Thomas had, an, had no aquaponics experience. Thomas, Thomas also made up more ways to charge my husband for other services, such as weekly landscaping, offered my husband hourly machine rates of $50 plus by diesel gas, asking my husband to pay for a portion of Thomas's personal water filtration for his home. He asked Simeon to pay for a portion of lawn care machines, chainsaws. He was even brave enough to ask me to buy him a trailer so that he could have haul stuff for us. And I declined. I feel the state was an actor in this unlawful practice through the manager of Kahuku Agriculture Park. By now, my husband was locked into Ma a situation that was very uncomfortable. Ma'am, we have your written testimony. Yes. And I am confident the members will read it. Yes. Um, did you want to, so just to clarify, you're in support of this measure? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, if you wanted to summarize the basis for your support. My husband was done wrong. He thought he was doing something and helping the state, but yet he was tricked into this lease of Thank you. We, members, we also have testimony in support of HCR 77, HR 70 from um, Simeon Rojas. Did you wanna provide testimony? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Morning. My name is Simeon Ross, a 20 year war veteran from Kalihi, who partnered with my family, my wife, and to certify to the Hawaii Go Fund program at the Waimanalo Research Center and started my dream farm. I was in a military mission that I lost 30 fellow soldiers during a helicopter crash in Iraq. When I came back from war, I couldn't control myself. So many anger, so many panic attacks, headaches, I was always edgy and just spiraling out of control. Farming really helped me with post-traumatic distress disorder. And I wish I could also share that with my other fellow veterans that this program that I'm trying to create is for the community, the program, and as well as for the whole state of Hawaii. Because it has been difficult for me to find peace and assimilate it back into society after the war. Um, today, I still live with my military values and found purpose against science, nature, growing things, and 
the biggest part is I invested $200,000 in hard work in my new mission. And my mission was to provide food, to provide uh, food security and sustainability for our state. I seen that when I went to Hawaii Go Farm program. So my biggest mission is in, with my family and my whole friends, relatives is, I call it Operation Feed Hawaii. I am programmed to adhere to protocols. That's what I learned in the military all my life. So through all this, we established our sustainability, sustainable agriculture eco farm in which we grow lettuce, tilapia, catfish, we breed prawns um, so that we can help um, the farmers out here in, in, in the state of Hawaii, as well as shrimp hatchery and operations. Um, it's a model that I wanted to, to, to bring out to the community and to the small farmers rather than, um, you know, we already have big, big farmers out there, which is, I think it's, we, we're, we're in a small island. So I think it's, it's very important for us to get uh, in a smaller scale so we can get it out there. And, and not just the big business. Sir, so, I'm gonna ask you to also summarize your testimony. We do have your written testimony and yes. you can be assured that we'll read it. Yes, yeah, so um, it, 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 was, it was a bad experience for me for being at the Hawaii Ag Park for over five years. I witnessed the, negle the neglections, the abuse, the misuse of lands. And it's something that I learned from the Hawaii Go Farm program is when you're given a land to perform with, we have to abide with it and produce and perform our duties. And that's what the Hawaii Department of Agriculture, Roy Hasigawa, uh, failed to do is to perform their duties to a part where we can be sustainable, we can do our job correctly. As I said, following protocols is very important. And if we don't do that, we're never gonna hit our, our goal, which was the governor's goals is to double up the production, which was, our production, we, we, we only produce 10% here in Hawaii and double that, that's 30%. No, we want to go 100 or 90% or even 50 and double the 50. So that's my biggest concern. Please, I ask of these consuls and the legislator to make changes. And I know you guys can make changes. Mahalo, malama aina. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Seeing none, members, are there any questions? Seeing none, we're going to move on to HCR 20, HR uh, 22. Requesting the Department of Agriculture to submit a report on pesticide inspections conducted within the past five years and strengthen statewide enforcement of, of restricted use pesticide violations. First person to testify will be um, Chair uh, Shimabukuro Geyser from the Department of Agriculture with comments. Mahalo Vice Chair and Chair and members of the committee. Um, we comment that we already issue a report regarding inspection numbers in the annual legislative report after the end of the state fiscal year. And in our written testimony, we have provided some metrics for you. Um, so we comment that, um, you know, we have the ability to already do so uh, if, uh, if there is a request. Thank you. Thank you. Next person to provide testimony is Clayton Kubo uh, in support, individual in support. Thank you very much for letting me testify, Vice Chair chair and other members of this committee. I understand that this is only a resolution, but at least it's somewhat in a step of the right direction. For many years, people and also companies has been misusing their so-called trained skill, I guess. On the island of Kauai, 
we have big agriculture, which sprays a lot of poisons, a lot of restricted use pesticide. Uh, for over 20 years, I've been kind of kind of going against them. But I look forward to at least talking with them now. At least come to a so-called understanding that if you guys want to spray, make sure you guys keep it on you guys' property. No let them come into my home or on the roadways because I have made a lot of complaints. A lot of complaints. This is this is too long in coming, let's put it that way, for me and my family. Please consider passing this resolution, but make it to be about all, not just only restricted use, but I look forward to a bill probably next year. And right now I am hunting and gathering. So thank you guys very much for you guys' time. Aloha, have a good one. Aloha, thank you. There are about 10 other individuals and organizations providing testimony, um, all in support of this measure. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Seeing none, committee members, are there any questions? Seeing none, we're gonna move on to HCR 25. Um, HR 23, urging the Department of Education School Food Services branch to adopt an addendum to its agreements for an INAPONO, for INAPONO, requiring the procurement of goods, services, or both from food hubs. So first to testify, um, we'll hear from Chair Shimofukuro Geyser from the Department of Ag with comments. Mahalo, Vice Chair, uh, Chair and members of the committee. Uh, we stand on a written testimony. We support the intent of the resolution and we defer to Department of Education. Thank you. Next we'll hear from Mr. Tanaka from the Department of Education with comments. Good morning, aloha. Uh, Chair Hashem, Vice Chair Peruso, members of the committee. Thank you for your time today. Uh, the, the Department of Education stands by its testimony provided. Um, based on some information that I've worked with, uh, with the Farm Bureau and Department of Ag, Please realize that there are over 7,000 small farmers across the state. Um, there are, we have already begun our evaluation of the hubs and how we're going to work with them, but um, please don't limit us only to the hubs. Uh, I think uh, we can engage with farmers to, to provide some specialty products that we may need for our menu programs. But thank you very much for your time. Aloha. Thank you. Next, we hear from Lady Bernal, Hawaii Farm to School, Hui, Hawaii Public Health Institute, in support. Aloha, Mai Kako. The Hawaii Farm to School, Hui, supports this resolution, noting that food hubs play a critical role in the development of sustainable community food systems. 14 food hubs that are part of the Food Hub Hui in Hawaii already aggregate from over 1,000 small farmers. And we can really harness the power of food hubs with Farm to School to strengthen community food systems. Mahalo. Thank you. So final testifier we have signed up for this measure. Is there anyone else wishing to testify? Seeing none, members, are there any questions? Seeing none, I, I did wanna note that there are 10 other individuals and organizations in support of this measure um, with none opposed. Moving on to the next measure, we're gonna um, here, HCR 92, HR 86, the, which urges the Department of Agriculture to assist coffee farmers in purchasing organic fertilizer to prevent coffee leaf rust. Um, first to testify, we'll hear from uh, Chair Shimokuro Geyser from the Department of Ag with comments. Mahalo, Vice Chair, uh, Chair, and members of the committee. Um, I'm gonna read the testimony, it's very brief. Uh, we appreciate the intent of this resolution and we agree that tree health plays a part in the resistance of plants to coffee leaf rust. However, the science behind fertilizers and amendments to prevent uh, 
coffee leaf rust is unfounded. The department believes support for the coffee growers on registered and labeled fungicides and the long-term identification and importation through legal means of coffee leaf rust resistant varieties. We recognize the cost of fertilizer can be prohibited. And the department would like to note that there are multiple bills promoting composting, including subsidies, uh, which are still alive in this session. Um, if passed, uh, coffee growers can take advantage of um, these uh, opportunities of subsidies without decreasing monies allocated for coffee leaf uh, rust control. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. Uh, th that's the final person we have signed up for this measure. Is there anyone else wish wishing to testify? Seeing none, members, are there any questions? Seeing none, I wanted to note that there are nine other individuals and organizations uh, in support of this measure. Um, and we will move on to uh, HR 86, uh, sorry, HCR uh, 8. HR 68, HCR 75, urging the city and county of Honolulu Department of Environmental Services and Partners to utilize the property located at 45230 uh, Kulaoli Street, Kaneohe, Hawaii for aquaculture purposes that will not in unreasonably interfere with the department's regular use of the property. First to testify, we, hmm, we have no um, oral testimony on that measure. So there's nobody to ask questions of. So we are gonna move straight on to um, HR 99, H, sorry, HCR 99, HR 94, urging the Honolulu City Council to review its ordinance on chickens, investigate the ordinance's role in contributing to the growing population of feral chickens and take action to reduce the growing problem of feral chickens. We have one person to testify in this measure. And uh, that is um, Chair Phil Chair Shumabukuro Geyser from the Department of Ag with comments. Uh, Chair, are we? Um, Sorry, did I give Chair. you the wrong? Yeah. I... HR 99. So sorry, my apologies. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we have no testimony in support. Uh, oh, we have we have written testimony in support of the measure um, from one individual. So we'll move on to our final measure, which is HCR 65, HR 59, requesting the Department of Agriculture to develop a certification process for hunters to become certified inspectors in order to inspect their own game for sale. So on that measure, uh, we do have the Chair of Phyllis Schumer-Geyser from the Department of Ag with comments. Thank you, Vice Chair, uh, Chair and members of the committee. Uh, I, I'm going to read our testimony. It's very brief. Um, you know, uh, we do not support the measure. Um, Meat inspection and processing for sale involves more than postmortem examination for food safety. Uh, the state of Hawaii does not have a state meat inspection program. For, therefore, the state does not have facilities, staff, or resources to train and certify individuals for this competency. As a result, all meat inspection, um, the Federal Meat Inspection Act ins inspects facilities within the state, and they are governed by the USDA FSIS inspection, regulations and guidance as to the facility and the practices that are required. However, deer meat is not covered under um, FMIA like beef and falls under voluntary inspection by USDA FSIS. Game meat for sale must be inspected anti-postmortem before being killed in, a, in addition to postmortem um, by FSIS. And so um, we in, uh, also uh, explained um, the process to have exotic game like deer um, inspected um, for sale. And that you know, a government meat inspector certification is acquired through instruction on job training and a series of validated competency examinations and on job 
on the job evaluation. So uh, that's, those are the reasons why uh, we are um, not in support of the measure. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Isaac Maeda, Department of Agriculture. He is uh, oh, available uh, to answer questions. He's our state veterinarian. Perfect. Is, are there any other community members who wish to testify on this measure? Seeing none, community members, are there any questions? Yeah, I've got one for Department of Ag. Okay, Representative Mario, she has one for Department, Department of Agriculture. Of so I, I really like the concept of this bill, if we could do it, uh, but are you saying that federally it's impossible because it requires pre, I mean, it requires inspection of the animal if while it's still alive? So, um, so what we're saying is um, the state, our, as an agency of the state, uh, we, we do not have that, that authority. It's all, all meat inspection is done at the federal level. And um, so we would, um, I would like to call Dr. Maeda to explain it, but uh, you know we'd like to support um, the in, uh, the ability to for uh, our our residents um, to consume exotic meat that they kill, but uh, in order to get the hunters certified, uh, they would have to go through this uh, process that um, the federal government federal government overseas. Okay. Uh, could uh, well, you... I understand it. It's, instead of hearing from him, maybe I could just ask you if, if we had changed this resolution then to the Department of Agriculture, uh, working with the federal government to develop a certification process, is that I understand that you folks can't do it. You're saying that it needs to be done federally, but is your department willing to work with the federal government to try to develop this kind of process? We, we can collaborate and um, report back um, with uh, ways to to uh, develop uh, something that you're proposing in the okay, so resolution. You're, you're, you're not against the concept of the bill, you're just saying that you're not the correct entity that is the federal correct. government, but you are willing to work with the feds to, to try to get this to yes. work. And we have been um, in uh, constant communication uh, with USDA FSA, FSIS because of uh, all the issues that we've been having with access deer mm -hmm. you know, on the neighbor island. So, so what have they said, if you um, give us just a general you know, uh, basically what's in our testimony that um, they, it's a voluntary process for exotic game. And so it's up to the person that wants to have the, the deer or any other type of exotic animal uh, slaughtered and inspected uh, to contact the federal uh, program and arrange for inspection. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry, um, Felix. So in other words, you're just saying uh, they can already do it. They just go to USDA. To yes, sum it up they real can, simply. Yes, um, okay. and I think. Um, That's all, that just, was my yeah. question. Yeah. In other words, just go to USDA. Yeah. Do you, right? Yes, I mean, there's the ability to voluntarily request the inspection. Oh, can I ask one more follow-up question then? <laughs> so, um, but if the department, as it is being urged in this or requested in this resolution, um, were to be asked to facilitate that process for folks, um, that is something that you could do is kind of within your capacity to help coordinate. Oh, uh, yes. Um, we are um, a part of a task force, a working group with the county of Maui. Um, and so we, we, not only us, but I think um, DLNR is also a, a member of that task force or working group. Uh, Dr. Maeda re represents the department. And I think um, a big challenge just from my personal observation is that, you know, sometimes the federal processes are, are um, complicated, complex, and um, may deter people from actually doing it because it is, can be cumbersome. Right, so that if this, if you were to be asked to kind of help translate um, and facilitate the process. You're yes, I, and I, um, I haven't conferred with Chair Case, but I think uh, DLNR needs to be involved too because, you know, it is uh, exotic. Uh, animals, wildlife. So, 
Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we're going to. Oh, members, any other any additional questions? I just okay. want to know the process. Here. I'll ask later. Okay, I'll ask later. Seeing them, we're gonna gavel up first.
Reconvening the Committee on Agriculture for decision making. Um, we're going to begin with uh, Senate Bill 3197 SD2. Chair's recommendation is to pass with tech amendments. Are there any uh, questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Hey, members, we're voting on SB 3197. Seven. 3197. Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendment. The chair and vice chair votes aye. Uh, Representative Lowen? Aye. Representative Martin? Aye. Mate Representative Matayoshi? Aye. Representative Todd? Aye. Representative Kukioka? Aye. Representative Matsumoto? Aye. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Moving on to SB 2218, SD1. Chair's recommendation is to pass with tech amendments, and we are also going to amend. Um, the text of the measure to specify a termination date of June 30th, 2027 for the five-year pilot. Any questions or concerns? Seeing none, vice chair for the vote. Okay, members are voting on SB 2218, SD1, chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Noting the presence of all members, are there any reservations or no? Seeing none, chair, your recommendation is adopted. Moving on to SB 2056, SD1, relating to soil classifications, Chair's recommendation is to incorporate the language modifications requested by the um, Land Use Commission in part so that we're going to be um, redefining this as a collaborative study led by OSPD in cooperation with LUC and Department of Ag. Are there any questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, members are voting on SB 2056, SD1. Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Are there any reservations or no? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you so much. SB 2907, SD1. Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, members are voting on SB 2. 2907 SD1, Chair's recommendation is to pass unamended. Are there any reservations or no? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you so much. SB 2996 SD1, relating to ants, Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, members are voting on SB 2996 SD1, Chair's recommendation is to pass unamended. Right? Correct. Are there any reservations or no's? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. SB 2621, SD1, Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, I share for the vote. Members are voting on SB 2621, SD1, Chair's recommendation is to pass unamended. Are there any reservations or no? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you so much. On SB 3251, SD1, HD1, we're going to um, not only include tech amendments, but also delete lines 10 through 14 on page four, which refer to hunters and not hunting guides, so as to avoid a title issue. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, members are voting on SB 3251 SD1 HD1. Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Are there any reservations or no? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you so much. On HCR 77, HR 70, a Chair's recommendation is to pass with tech amendments. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay. Members are voting on HCR 77 and HR 70. Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Are there any reservations or no's? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you so much. On HCR 24, HR 22, Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, members are voting on HCR 24 and HR 22. Chair's recommendation is to pass on amended. Are, any, are there any reservations or no? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you so much. On HCR 25, HR 23, my recommendation is to modify the title to delete the word requiring and replace it with the word supporting so that it will read urging the Department of Education School Food Services Branch to adopt an addendum to its agreements for INOPONO supporting the procurement of good services or both from food hubs. Any questions or concerns? Seeing none. Okay, members are voting on 
HR 20, HCR 25 and HR 23, Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Are there any reservations or no? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you so much. On HCR 92, HR 86, Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Any questions or concerns? Yeah, I'm a little concerned about Department of Agriculture's testimony that this is not based in science um, and urging us not to pass this resolution. I'll, I'll be voting with reservations. Any other questions or concerns? Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, HCR right? 90, yeah. Okay, members are voting on HCR 92 and HR 86. Chair's recommendation is to pass unamended. Voting the reservations with Representative Matayoshi. Any other reservations? Saying no. Oh, Representative Kogioka. Any other reservations? Representative Martin. Okay, anybody else? Saying none. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. On HR 68, mm -hmm. HCR 75, Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Any questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, members are voting on HR 68 and HCR 75. Chair's recommendation is to pass unamended. Are there any reservations or no? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you so much. On HCR 99, HR 94, Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, members are voting on HCR 99, HR 94. Chair's recommendation is to pass unamended, correct? Correct. Is there any reservations or no? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. And on the final resolution or set of resolutions, um, my recommendation is to modify the title of this set of resolutions to read, requesting the Department of Agriculture to work with the federal government to develop a certification process for hunters to become certified inspectors in order to inspect their own game for sale. Other than that, are there any questions or concerns? Thank you so much. Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, members are voting on HCR 65 and HR 59. Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Are there any reservations or no? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Mahalo, and this hearing is adjourned.